As we saw in my last video, and I did the test for you, that uh, that aquarium that's out in the Lanai with the six large ranchos had a nitrate reading of zero. But that uses not only BCB bags, but it also uses a plenum. And the test I'm going to show you, I'm going to uh, show you the goldfish aquarium that has no plenum. In fact, it has no aid of biological filter whatsoever. And we are going to see exactly how the nitrate reading is and phosphate reading of that aquarium is compared to the one that's out in the lanai. Now, don't forget, I did a video on that, that those two goldfish in that aquarium are eating constantly. They get fed twice a day by me, but eat algae on a constant basis. And if you want to find out how bad it is, watch my video on green worms all over the aquarium. So let's get into the video. Okay, these are the two Hannah colorometers here. And uh, I like these better than I did the API. And I like them better than the uh, Hannah that I use. The first thing you do is you turn them on. It gives you a C1. And these are ready to go uh, with the vials of water. Now you fill the vials up with your aquarium water. <clears throat> and the first thing you want to do after you fill them up with aquarium water is you want to calibrate them according to the aquarium water turbidity. The turbidity of the water is going to be calibrated so it knows how clear your water is in order to give you an accurate reading on once you put the regents in. And that's good. Now, as you see, the nitrate has already calibrated. So now it knows how clean and clear that water is before you do your test. Because if it doesn't know that, then it's not going to be able to tell the accuracy of the color of the vial and subtract what the turbidity was of the particular vial before it was put into the checkers. Now, these are very simple checkers. They, uh, everything comes in a foil pack. You just cut the foil pack open, put whatever amounts in there. There's no drops to count, nothing. Very simple. What I do is I cut them and then I bend them so they have a point on them and then I just knock them in there. And now I'll take the vial and I will shake, shake it vigorously at least 15 to 30 seconds to make sure that uh, all the content that's inside there gets dissolved. And it's a lot different than if you use your API because uh, API, and, and the same way with the HANA, the, not the HANA, but the uh, Lamont, is because you got to Put so much in there, you got to shake it. Don't shake it up real light, but really shake it up good. But anyway, you got to shake them up, then you got to put 10 drops in, you got to count the drops, then you got to shake it up real good, and then you got to put more drops in, and then you got to make sure you shake it up for a certain amount of time. This, all you have to do is make sure you shake it up real good, vigorously, and then it has a timer, you press it, you hold down the button, the timer starts. Now I'll do the phosphate. The same procedure. Open up the vial. Now put the region in of the phosphate package, the aluminum phosphate package. I'll put that in there and I will vigorously shake that up and I will put it into the checker. Now if anybody remembers that uh, I like these checkers. I have double checked them like I said with the API and with the uh, Lamont. Here's what I found out. They're a lot more accurate than the API, which would make sense because that's a cheap, cheaper test kit. And they matched up with the Lamont. So I found that to be a plus because the Lamont test kits 
are more of your professional test kits that are used out there that uh, DVMs use or your ichthyologists will use or your limonologists will use. They'll use like your Lamonts. But these I find to be just as accurate as the Lamont and I've double checked them so you don't have to worry. I know it says Marine on there. A lot of people have asked me it will only do Marine. But I found them to match up and I've double checked them so I find them to be very very easy to use as you can see. You can't get any easier than this than, uh, than the other ones that are using regions and you, and you got to watch everything and make sure you get the right amount of region in there. This is so simple to do compared to others. And when I told you about uh, Dr. Franco in Italy as you can see by the photo here, Dr. Frankel did his test all with a color meter, just like the Hannah's are. And in fact, that could that could even be a desktop Hannah color meter. And uh, that meter, I th I think, is anywhere between three to six hundred dollars for a more professional meter like that, like he was using. But uh, these small, what they call handheld meters, are good like if you're out in the field or, or for the hobbyists without spending three to six hundred dollars on a more professional meter like Dr. Franco here used. And these will uh, definitely be a lot more accurate than using the API test kits or some of your uh, Tetra, that's another one, test kit. These are going to be a lot more accurate than, than those test kits. And I've double checked them just to make sure. And for, through my test of what I found, that the Hannah's here that you're looking at are a lot more accurate than the API. So you can, you can take that to the bank that the uh, API, when uh, you look at the color charts of the API, you'll notice that the fresh water and salt water are very close. Fresh, uh, salt water is going to be a little lighter in color, you know, but how do you tell that? I mean, honestly, how are you going to look through a test tube and really be able to tell, you know, the color of the accuracy of what you're trying to get. It's it's hard. And I hear a lot of people complain about that. These are so easy to look at the numbers and you're done. It is that simple. The phosphate's almost done. And it's a, the, uh, uh, the Lamont one, on the other hand, yeah, you could tell the color are a lot closer together and you can basically look through and see the sample of what you're getting. And right now for that aquarium we have a 0 .19, 0 0.19 phosphate reading. That's a very good phosphate reading for that small aquarium. And remember the food I'm feeding uh, has nitrates in it because I'm using the Tetra color bits has phosphates in it. It even says it has phosphates in it. So 0 0.19 that's pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that as far as phosphates. And we'll see what the nitrates are. But the fact of it is, this is something that uh, we're going to find out if a anoxy filtration system with a BCB bag is more than enough without using a plenum. A lot of people ask me, can I use a plenum without the you know BCB bag? Can I use a BCB without the plenum? Yes, on both accounts. One complements the other. So when you uh, use a plenum with an anoxy filter, it just complements it. That's all. That That's why I recommend using both of them for most aquariums. But if you're a hobbyist, don't want to go through the trouble of putting in a plenum into your aquarium, then the BCB basket itself, which is large, 
is handling the whole aquarium by itself. And that's what I meant by no filtration, is this is the only biological filtration being used in this aquarium. And even though everything gets cleaned out, you never touch your basket, and therefore you don't wreck your biological activity. Everything else must regrow the biological activity back into the sponges and everything else that you have cleaned out. In just a few seconds, in less than 30 seconds, we will now be able to see the nitrate reading of that aquarium. But I do highly recommend these because people do ask me about test kits. Um, they may be a little more upfront than a $20 test kit or $28 test kit, but the accuracy is right on the money. They shut off automatically, so uh, they won't wear down the battery. So now we're going to find out what the nitrates are in that aquarium, and they're it's 10.6. So now we know that the nitrates in the aquarium on this day are 10.6 and we know what the phosphate reading is 0.19. So phosphates are extremely low and even the nitrates for fish that are constantly eating and with all the 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 what can I say all the poop they are making which I've showed in my other videos a nitrate of 10.6 is very low for two fish that are being fed twice a day plus eating all day long plant matter and this is as long because you got to remember if any of that plant matter has absorbed any or taken in any of that nitrate they're now eating that nitrate and expelling it and don't forget also they're creating a lot of ammonia those two goldfish so as the ammonia gets broken down into nitrites and then it gets broken down into nitrates if the nitrates are there and uh, the BCB basket has to handle it the aquarium filter was just cleaned not long ago so it now has to reestablish all its biological filter not on the BCB basket itself but it has to establish all that biological filter that was all on the sponges and the and the mats I put in there that all been sterilized and cleaned so that now has to rebuild up a new biological filter for the aquarium however there is no ammonia and no nitrites in the aquarium so the fish never got ammonia burn on their fins or or gasping for air and that's the good thing about using an anoxic filter is it makes a very clean looking tank. So here we are with the Goldfish Aquarium 10.6. Not bad. Could be better, but I will test it out later. And uh, I did want to bring up something before I end this video. Here is a uh, another YouTube channel. Uh, she has a YouTube channel and uh, she's showing her uh, anoxic filter, her plenum and stuff like this in case you want to see how to make a plenum in case you don't want to go to my back archives. But I thought I, I would uh, show you. But I've seen a lot of channels coming up now. A lot of people are making YouTube channels showing anoxic filtration benefits of anoxic filters and plenums. So I just wanted to show you that uh, they're becoming more plentiful than they were 30 years ago, 35 years ago. People now are getting YouTube channels. They're putting them out there for hobbyists to watch, to show hobbyists how they build things, to tell them of their progress. So I'm not the only channel anymore. I know some people hate this. They, they hate it with a passion that uh, there's more and more YouTube channels coming out of people talking about, hey, I'm using an oxy filter, I'm using a plenum. They don't like that. But I see there's more and more, and here's one right here, and I think I showed you one not long ago about... Uh, a person with a YouTube channel doing an anoxic filter. So anyhow, all you have to do now is just basically go and uh, 
on YouTube and say, you know, Anoxy filters, and now there's more and more people talking about them and more and more people setting them up for you from start to finish, which is good for uh, people who uh, don't know how to set one up. And uh, I think she shows a setup on a 40 gallon breeder. And it looks like uh, it's, it's a used tank, or it maybe had something in it previously because she, she cleans it out before she uses it. So I'm assuming by the way it looks, it's not a brand new tank. Anyhow, that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel. But uh, more and more channels are starting to come out with more information about plenums and anoxic filters. So stay tuned. I will be making more videos. And happy fish keeping.